Right to be read podcast, episode number 108. Interview with Parvis Pervisi. You are listening to the Right to be Read podcast, and this is your host, Ani Alexander. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Right to be Read podcast, the podcast that inspires and encourages writers. I'm your host, Dani Alexander. And before we start, I would like to remind you once again about the exciting announcement I've got. Uh, the thing is, Right to be Read podcast is becoming one year old on July 1st. I can't believe it's happening. It's really, really nice to realize that I've been doing this since a year already that I've had more than 100 interviews up to now and that so many amazing people like you are listening to the show. So let's celebrate together. Let's just get together on July 1st and celebrate podcast's first year anniversary and have a party. So I'm throwing out a live Q&A hangout with me and with a surprise guest. And I really, really encourage you to come over and register and be with me in that special day. I hope that we will have lots of fun. I will ask all of your questions, no matter whether they're related to writing or anything else. I will tell you how we, we all started this and um, I'll share some stories and some things that I found out from my guests. Uh, I think it's going to be interesting. I hope it will be because it's the first time I'm kind of doing something like this. But uh, I think that I'll pull it out because I will have you around with me. So just hop over to www.annialexander.com backward slash birthday. Register to the birthday. I will send you an email telling you how exactly you can join. And, you know, if for some reason you can't make it, well, then um, all I can do is send you the recording so you will see what you have missed. Okay, and now let's start the interview of today. Uh, today I have a guest and his name is Parvis Parvizi. Parvis is a co-founder of Clamor, a mobile app and platform making audio more social and viral. So users have been calling it Instagram of audio and it features snack-sized audio clips of 18 seconds or less. Previously, Parvis worked at McKinsey and Company, Goldman Sachs, the FCC and O'Melveny and Myers. I hope I pronounced it right. So he has advised top five global media companies and mobile careers on strategy and growth. And today we will try to find out what is Clamor, how we use it and how useful it can be for authors specifically. So let's start. Hello there, Parvis. Welcome to the Right to be Read podcast. I'm really happy to have you over. Thrilled to be here. Thanks for making the time. Uh, it's it's like, you know, I always have time for guests who can bring value to my audience. So, you know, time is not a big issue yet. So <laughs> we'll see how it goes later on. So basically, I'll, I'll tell you like a short story. To, so people let, you know, know how we came up together. Uh, basically, uh, my very good friend, Michelle, from uh, the... Uh, from the podcasting uh, network introduced me to an amazing place which she said that you know helped her a lot to promote her podcast which is called Clamor and she also introduced me to you and as a co-founder of the Clamor I decided that we'll be talking about what it is exactly and how authors specifically can use it to promote their works and get some visibility so let's just start from the basics I deliberately didn't go to Clamor and I, I just downloaded it on my iPhone but I haven't gone into details and uh, to try to see how it works just because I knew that I will be talking to you today. So let's start from the basics. I have an iPhone, I have the app in my iPhone. So where do I, first of all, what is this app for and yeah. where do we start using it? Sure, so Clamor 
is a lot of early users are calling us audio Instagram and audio Twitter. So it's as if if you had Twitter in audio, it would be like Clamor. It's a continuous stream of short audio clips. They're maximum 18 seconds and they're personalized to your interests. So it's just a stream that keeps playing uh, of 18 second or less clips. Now, each of those clips can be expanded. So you can press a hear more button and launch a full podcast or in some cases music or other content. Um, Content creators can also choose to have that button take the user to a, a website, for example. It doesn't always have to be audio, but we're audio focused. Um, so that, in a nutshell, that's what Clamor is, which is short form audio, like an audio Twitter or audio Instagram. Um, and the way we've seen people using it um, is just quite interesting in several ways. Some people just like to use Clamor for a power feed of mostly information. So they love these short, tiny clips uh, in areas of interest to them. And they're often using it almost as like a news feed um, and just listening to you know, five, 10 minutes worth in the morning while they get ready in order to know everything that's going on. Um, you know, there are some podcasts and other radio shows that have news, but with Clamor, you can really customize it to exactly the mm-hmm. areas that are interesting to you. Um, a second way people use Clamor is as, as a bit of a discovery vehicle. So they listen to Clamor and the clips on Clamor to then decide, hey, that sounds pretty interesting. I'm going to dive in. And that's especially the case for things like podcasts. Um, that's where we've seen, we've seen podcasters finding Clamor really useful and interesting, um, which is they can identify highlights of their shows and, um, and then post them on Clamor. And then folks listen to those highlights and they say, you know what, that sounds like a really interesting show. I'm going to press the hear more button and just listen to the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the challenges audio has had is it's not social and it's not very discoverable. Um, looking at United States data, for example, um, you know, when you look at a company like Edison Research that does a lot of work around podcasting, the average, first of all, podcasts have less than 20% penetration. So less than 20% of the population actually engages in podcasting, even today. Um, and the average listener listens to six podcasts, but actually the median listener listens to less than three. So of podcast listeners, the average is six because there are some people who listen to a lot of them and they're kind of addicted, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but 60% of podcast listeners listen to three or less. And one of the reasons is it's very difficult to actually discover podcasts. Um, There's not a really good mechanism for finding them. The podcast app on the iPhone, it doesn't have a good kind of search capability for really finding stuff tied to your interests. Um, So we're trying to meet that gap for podcasters, where we think if you shrink down the unit size to these little bite-sized pieces, that makes it easier for folks to share things from podcasts that they love and also for people to discover podcasts that they love. Um, So that's the second big use area. The first one is these kind of power feeds of information that people that, that are very customized power feed of just kind of headlines and information. The second is discovery. And the third is um, people are just doing really creative forms of self-expression um, where, you know, on Clamor, you can actually multi-track and you can take somebody's existing Clamor and pull it into a new Clamor using the remix function. So you see people doing things like um, they'll take a news story, like just a typical NPR news story, and they'll add a rap beat to it um, on Clamor and they'll publish that um, as kind of a funny little rap that they make. Um, or they're collaboratively creating where somebody will throw down some beats and somebody else will throw down some lyrics on top, for example, Mm -hmm. or they'll just make commentary on a news item um, just right on top of it. So that's kind of the third area of use, which is people making memes and interesting kinds of um, forms of self-expression. That stuff's pretty early. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see. So basically, can we say that it's like audio-based social media, which is growing right now and where people can meet um, like-minded audience and like-minded people who create similar content as well? Absolutely. So we, we built really Clamor exactly as a social platform. And so but I should say it's an open social platform. So I'll play out some of what, what that means. 
Um, first of all, anytime you like something on Clamor where you hit the thumbs up button next to any piece that you're listening to, everybody who's following you gets that in their feed as well. Um, uh -huh. And then we have a deduper. So if five of your friends like the same thing, you don't hear it five times, of course. Um, so that's a form of social distribution. We also have a uh, private messaging function in Clamor. So you know, it's an audio platform, but you can share a Clamor individually with somebody, and then you engage in a chat string with them that looks kind of like your text messaging string on your phone, um, where you can throw Clamors back and forth, uh, which folks have found to be a lot of fun as well. And of course, every Clamor can be shared out to Facebook, Twitter, email, SMS. And while you know, ev all of the functionality is within the app, we, you don't have to have the app in order to listen to things in Clamor. So we, when somebody shares a Clamor to Facebook or Twitter, it plays natively in those environments. So we often see podcasters mm -hmm. taking highlights of their shows, they post them to Clamor, and then it simultaneously posts to Twitter and Facebook. So they're basically getting this full social distribution just from posting that one Clamor. Um, and likewise, if a fan emails a Clamor or SMS or text messages a clamor to their friends, it's a link that just plays off a simple web player. Um, so those are, those are some of the, the social aspects of clamor. Um, and then one last thing I'll flag, which is just really neat, um, is every clamor is an open embeddable object. What that means is every clamor can be embedded on other digital properties as a widget. So mm -hmm. you can make a widget out of an account, out of a channel, or even out of a search term. And what we've seen a lot of folks start to do is they'll post widgets of their accounts on their websites. A lot of podcasters have done this. Even somebody recently who has a health site did this, where it then allows somebody who's visiting the site to press play and start hearing highlights mm -hmm. of past shows, of other content. And it starts opening up access to older catalog content that normally people might not sort of take yeah. the time to go check out, but now they'll just be able to hear this reel of those things and say, wait a minute, that sounded like a pretty good interview that happened, you know, six months ago. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's, that's another form where that's almost like a Tumblr-esque thing. And you can embed these on Tumblr in addition to WordPress and other websites. Um, and so, so we very much built it to be interactive, social, and shareable, um, in addition to just a great audio experience. You're, you're exactly right. Okay, I see. So is this only an iPhone app or you have it for, um, for um, other devices as well? So we are iOS only right now. Uh, for the iPhone and for people who own iPads, they can search for Clamor in the App Store and just make sure to set the settings so that the I iPhone apps are are discoverable because normally on iPad it'll just look for iPad only apps. Uh -huh. um, we're we're building out. We have a web version that's at publisher.clamor.com. That's mostly just for publishers. It's very bare bones. It allows you to load, uh, you know, a file that's the Clamor, and then it allows you to just do the basic listening where you hit play. But it doesn't have the social and customization features. During this next month, we're going to be releasing our mobile responsive web version of Clamor. So that's essentially mm -hmm. going to be equivalent to the iOS app uh, on the web. And that's going to be mobile responsive so that Android users can access that and have a great uh -huh. experience as well. Uh, and then after that, we'll look at the Android version for um, during the course of this year to develop that. Okay, I see. Well, apparently, I mean, we obviously see what benefits one can get as a podcaster to use Clamor. Uh, but let's try to imagine if you are an author, a self-published author who has mm -hmm. some books on, on Kindle, let's say on Amazon or some mm -hmm. other platforms, as well as maybe even the audiobook, since it's becoming more and more popular to have the audio version of the book. Um, yeah. So let's say someone is just starting he hasn't really built in audience yet because he this is his first book sure. uh, how can he use clamor as as a marketing channel to kind of gain some audience and get some visibility for his book absolutely great question a, a few great options here um and i'll throw out the ones that i can that we've seen and that i can think of 
but really the possibilities are endless for, for what people can do and, and where their creativity takes them as to how they use Clamor. Um, so the first thing is we really look to feature anybody putting up new content on Clamor. We have an editorial team that listens to new things. Um, we're a little bit behind because we've had so many people joining Clamor recently, um, but we try to get to it within a week where we listen to new things and then we look to feature them in one of our channels. Um, so Clamor is organized their own channels. You can create your own channel um, and share that with friends, but we have some default channels that um, you know new users see and that they can subscribe to. Mm -hmm. So we look to add new people into those channels. So one thing an author can do is she can make, for example, clamors of her content in her book, especially if it's something I think that's nonfiction, um, things that lend themselves to tips or summaries. But even for fiction, um, we've seen people doing interesting things where they'll grab little excerpts. Um, often we find the best way to use clamor is to actually have the content of the clamor be a standalone useful piece of information. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times new people will join Clamor and the first instinct they'll have is they'll just promote themselves. They'll say, hey, I'm X, listen to me. And that's a natural instinct to do that. But you know, the challenge is for the listener, they have no clue who this person is and just somebody saying, listen to me, isn't going to really do much to convince them. Mm -hmm. um, and so sometimes some you know, people will do like a funny voice or something like that to give a sense of their personality. That helps. Um, but we find the most effective way to use Clamor is to post Clamors that contain a useful piece of information or entertainment, something where the person is going to say, that, just 18 seconds of that was useful. So I definitely want to go now engage with the full content. Um, and so that, that, that's kind of main tip there. And when you start posting clamors, our editorial team will look to push you into channels, um, that will get, you know, better, better kind of publicity recognition among the user base. Um, a second move with clamor besides just the, you know, listening on clamor that can happen is using clamor as a source of content. So a lot of authors, they will typically have, um, you know, just a simple landing page website, um, if, if not something more complex. And so Clamor gives them a new piece of media that they can put on their website. You know, the website will typically just have you know, author, maybe some previews of the book, things like that. Um, now the author can actually put a widget of, uh, on the website and have excerpts of the book or even um, observations of their own, uh, right? So it could be a little bit of backstory, but it's serialized into these short clips. It doesn't have to be um, as well produced and well thought through as a full podcast. It can just be small observations. We've seen several people who have established podcasts who said, you know what, I'm going to use Clamor just to test out some things. Um, I think of someone like Elsie Escobar, um, who's great, and she's got several podcasts, um, mm -hmm. you know, well-known person in the community. And she's just using Clamor to serialize uh, a set of content for a new podcast she's thinking about uh, but hasn't created. So she's just doing these little short clips. It's about wellness um, and yoga and kind of mindfulness, uh, a few different things mixed in together, um, more like a lifestyle type of content. And, um, and so the, the second way to use Clamor is it's a new form of media that you can use on your existing um, presence on the web. So you now have this little widget that you can embed and give people a multimedia experience without having to go through the effort to truly create a new podcast or record a YouTube video, um, things like that. It's very easy to make a clamor. You just hit the record button and um, you can speak into it. You can pull in any podcast, anything on SoundCloud. And we have a bunch of default sounds um, in the sound section that are thing like, things like beats and mm -hmm. famous movie quotes. So we give a lot of tools to people. Um, to not have to be really have much of a rig or anything set up, just you know your phone, and you can quickly make some things that sound quite professional. Um, so that's kind of the second way. One is in Clamor, the other is uh, with these widgets. And then the last way I'll just flag is, um, of course, posting Clamors to 
existing social media. Um, you know, you can record a clamor and then share it out to Twitter or Facebook. And you mentioned that, gee, some, a new author may not have a, a following. That's fine. It now gives them something that they can share out to other people and at mention them and tag them. That's a classic move, right? Where you see somebody who has an audience who mm -hmm. um, you want to engage with and you see it, you follow their conversation and then you insert yourself into that conversation in a productive manner where you say, hey, I have a comment on this or hey, I made something relevant to what you're saying and now you have something to share um, in, in that social media context. Yeah, I think it's great because in a sense, uh, you know, not many authors have the time to create long tail content all the time. Like, you know, they might not be very comfortable about sharing a 500 word blog post every single day. But, sure. you know, just sure. 18 seconds is I think everyone has 18 seconds daily just to go ahead and uh, record something which later on becomes a piece which can be shared and, and create some engagement engagement which is really really great so i was just wondering you mentioned that um that 18 seconds audio can have a, a follow-up like you know listen more or you know go and visit this and that so you can basically link this 18 seconds to any website or any other content like podcast episode or audiobook or you know landing pages etc so basically it's flexible Absolutely. So there's um, when you when you press play on Clamor, uh, you get it, you get a, the now playing screen, which it pops up into this screen where it just shows the one Clamor that's playing, and then they just automatically come one after the other, and you can swipe them if you want to move more quickly. Uh -huh. um, on there, there's a big button that says "Hear More," typically, and the creator can set that up however they want. So if you pull in anything from SoundCloud or anything from the My Podcasts button um, on the creation page. There are se several options. Um, so if you pull in anything, you can just pull in a podcast that's already on your phone. If you've downloaded it with the iPhone podcast app, um, th either of those options automatically creates the Hear More button. So you don't have to do anything. Um, we just intelligently pull in the link. We also pull in all the metadata and the image that comes with it as well. And so those are just automated. Um, you can modify them, but it's automated that it has that hear more available. Um, you can also set it up to go to iTunes for downloading your podcast, for example. So that button, instead of launching just the full podcast within Clamor, will take the user instead to um, iTunes. And then you can also set it up to play a YouTube video. Um, so it, in that case, it'll say watch more. Mm -hmm. And once that YouTube video is done, the Clamor stream will continue automatically. So it's not some sort of clunky experience. Uh -huh. It's all a very smooth experience. And then you can always link them anytime to any sort of web property. So it can be your own website. It can be an Amazon landing page for your book. Um, and so in that case, the button will say read more. Um, and then that'll pop up uh, the website that you take people to. Okay, so um, yeah. I, I basically think like I'm, I'm trying to um, have some analogy, like if you are making a very short audio piece to promote your longer uh, podcast episode, what you could probably do is record a thought provoking quote from a book and link it to right. the book, I guess. Yeah, exactly. You could link it to the book on Amazon or if the book is an audio book. Um, you know, or if, it, if it's a podcast, obviously you can just press have the hear more button and it'll just play the podcast and those will count for your statistics when it comes to, um, you know, things like um, attribution and mm -hmm. audience mm -hmm. count, things like that. Um, but if it's to a book, yeah, exactly. You, it, and you might even say in there, click the read more button to, uh, to get this book, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, absolutely. And then there's also, you can add description to each clamor and the user can pull up just there's a title to each clamor and they can pull up the title to mm -hmm. see more descriptive info um, as well as a link and things like that too. Okay, so you mentioned that you have different channels uh, based mm -hmm. on the topics. Yeah. So are there any channels which are related to, to authors and books and I don't know, stuff like that? Yeah, uh, well, you, you know, books, books really tie to every topic you can imagine. Um, so for a lot of the nonfiction things, there are things like um, personal development, 
self-help, um, spirituality. Um, so for, those are often popular um, mm-hmm. nonfiction topics. Uh, there are, of course, things like um, sports, tech news. Um, you know, th- those are quite popular on Clamor itself. Comedy is also popular. So those kinds of topics as well. Um, we also have one called New Podcasts, where there are a lot of um, there there are a lot of basically just different topics within podcasting. Mm-hmm. Like one that I can think of that ties to books is a terrific podcast called Craftlet um, uh, by Heather Ordover, and she she actually it's part podcast and part her actually reading classic books uh, in an audio format um, to, to her listeners, books that are public domain. Mm-hmm. Um, so those are the ones that come to mind. And, and really, we're quite open, and we've actually been cultivating people to be editors of channels. And so folks who are inspired can say, you know what, you guys, first of all, anybody can make their own channel, but they might say, you guys don't have, one of your default channels should be X. Like somebody's thinking about... Um, We have an education channel right now. It's education and trivia. But this person wants to make a channel for for educators, like teachers Uh themselves. Mm -hmm. And so he's actually trying to pull together a community of teachers and and get them contributing on a regular basis. And once that gets to a certain level of critical mass where we feel like there's regularly new content there – um, we'll include that in the featured channels list. Um, you, you know, we have no issues with that, and we would gladly do it. So, we also have a lot of flexibility around pulling together your own community and really being supportive of communities um, and featuring them when they get to some critical mass. Okay, I see. So let's try to imagine, I mean, I know many people who are not only authors, but are also speakers, also podcasters, and you know, they Mm -hmm. they do various of different things along with uh, self publishing, writing and self publishing books. So how would you recommend dealing with this? Do you kind of open, um, have a separate Clamor account for each of your activities or you have one Mm -hmm. general one where you cover pretty much everything? I mean, which would be more effective uh, in this case? For example, like me, I'm I'm a fiction author and I'm a podcaster as well. What do I do? Do do I get two accounts? Do I put everything under one account? Um, How do I deal with this? Yeah, we don't have any limits on accounts for exactly that reason. Um, we, it really comes down to how you think about your personal branding and your audience. I think if you're serving different audiences with um, the different facets of yourself, then it may make sense to have separate accounts. Now, you know, it's a little bit of administration. We don't have some of the, um, the tools that you know, a Twitter would have right now where you can quickly switch between them, but it's not that hard. You just sign mm-hmm. out and sign back in. Um, so that's definitely one easy move. I think that also makes it easier um, when you're being included in a channel, whether it's our editors or somebody else. Often somebody will listen to you and they'll say, you know, I want to include you in one of my channels. Um, Consistency helps because when you're added, when an account is added to a channel, everything that account publishes is added to that channel. So, uh, you know, for example, if you were added to personal development and all of your clamors are now going to show up to anybody who's listening to personal development. Um, it would be helpful if you were kind of pretty fo- your stuff was mm-hmm. pretty focused on personal development. Mm-hmm. Um, otherwise, what they'll do is probably mute you uh, at a certain point. So um, it just depends how far apart those facets of yourself are, whether they're serving different audiences. And really, that comes down to um, your branding uh, mm-hmm. more than anything. Else. Well, since you mentioned consistency, I mean, mm-hmm. how often are you advised to to record Clamors? Yeah. So one thing I'll say about that, which is really cool, is we have a scheduler in Clamor. So oh, cool. um, yeah, if you make a Clamor with the with the app, we don't have it in the app right now. We have it in the publisher portal. So you can just go and choose the option to edit your existing Clamors, and then you can set up uh, the day and the time. So that's great. Mm-hmm. Um, we see a number of people, you know, they'll bulk publish a set of things and then they'll post and they'll, they'll schedule them post on a regular schedule. I think when it comes down to th- that question of how many, how often, um, that's really the first rule is to produce stuff that's of high quality. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's more than, more than the mechanics of how often, et cetera, are um, 
kind of high quality. The second is something that's a consistent flow. Um, so one thing that's helpful is to use that scheduler and spread them out across the day and across multiple days. Um, we sometimes see some early users, they'll publish like five or 10 clamors and they'll all just be at the same time, uh, yeah. which is fine. But then only the people listening at that time are really going to get to hear it because most people are just listening to the stream of clamors and these will fall behind the newer ones. Yeah. Um, so we suggest spacing them out in a logical fashion um, across days and times. You know, and we've seen the range. I mean, some people, they'll do a daily clamor. Um, other people will do several clamors a day. Um, so that really, and, and our usage really is across the day consistent, really from call it eight in the morning till really eight or nine at night um, is when the usage is highest. There isn't a situation where there's this one or two hours that's this magic one or two hours where everybody's listening. Um, so being spread out across the day is, is really the, the right move there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then we let's just I'm just trying to imagine the, the size of this whole thing. How many users do you have? So we haven't released metrics publicly um, on Clamor. Uh, I'll, I'll share one thing with you to give you a sense. Um, we came out, we, we were in beta for a while, um, just with early users through word of mouth. And then we really came out, um, to the public about four weeks ago at a thing called the new media expo, which is, um, a podcaster convention in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. They cover podcasters and bloggers. I, that's where we met Michelle actually, um, who connected us. And, um, and since that, then we've had over 2000, new uh, new people joining who are content creators uh -huh. who are putting up their content that's not including their listeners and then other listeners that's just people who are actually publishing original content on clamor um so it gives you sort of a sense of some of the momentum um we're definitely early days but we're seeing a lot of creators start to join and then obviously their audiences and other listeners as well Okay, I see. Which makes me think that basically once it's it becomes quite, um, you know, large, since podcast episodes, uh, I mean, it's kind of funny to have podcast episodes at 80 seconds, uh, you know, 18, 18, 18, yeah. 18 sorry, 18 seconds, yeah, yeah. it itself can become a platform for a new version of a super mini podcast, for example, and, and have it like that on the pl platform itself. That's what we started to see people do. Uh, you know, Elsie Escobar, who I mentioned, she said, I'm going to just create a mini podcast. There's another person. He's got something called 18SP. Um, that's 18-second mm -hmm. podcast. And he just creates these 18-second little podcasts. Um, you know, we've seen that on other social media. And, um, you know, one of the things that's interesting is when you look across formats, there's been a short-form social flavor that's emerged for every single one. So text has Twitter. Images have Instagram. Video has Vine. But there's no audio yet, um, uh -huh. and we're trying to meet that, meet that gap. And um, on each of those, you've seen some of the uses that you just referenced where you've seen people on Twitter actually serialize whole books on Twitter. Yeah. Um, and certainly Vine has become its own form of entertainment where there are these self-contained six-second videos um, that people will loop. So we definitely are seeing that, and we expect that. But at the same time, we think the other uses will continue to exist. I think a lot of people, especially older people, they'll use Twitter primarily almost as an RSS reader. Mm -hmm. So they'll, you know, they'll just use it to see quick headlines and then most of them have a link with them and then they'll go read the full article when they want to read it. Um, and so we, it's more about multiple uses at the same time. And likewise, we think with podcasts, there will be these highlights of longer podcasts as some people are just getting essentially the snippets and the previews for, um, but then other people will say, you know what, my whole podcast is going to be in 18 second clips. Um, and that's cool. And we're excited for that. Yeah, it's it's like a yeah. super time savvy podcast. <laughs> exactly. Um, <laughs> okay, and one more thing, I'm I'm kind yeah. of trying to think about repurposing content. So when you mentioned all these social networks, I'm kind of thinking that uh, every tweet can uh, kind of get recorded and become a clamor and then sure. the tweet itself can become a quote image for Instagram and you know I mean uh, if, if someone kind of has the time to come up with this strategy he may come totally. up with you know one general 
branding and one general message across all these platforms, uh, linking yeah. to the same place, taking the traffic to to their property, whether it's a podcast or or a books page or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, you're 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 totally right. I mean, that's we've even seen. Um, there's a channel that's called Top Tweets that's mostly focused on humorous tweets, uh -huh. and somebody's just sitting there reading. Um, like the funniest tweets of the day. Um, and some of them are really funny. And it's kind of cool to get it in that format. You get a lot of the intonation that might be missing in text. Um, you're absolutely right. Um, and one of the things with Clamor is you can associate an image with each Clamor um, and obviously the title text and the descriptive text. So because you can publish your Clamor and it automatically goes to Twitter and Facebook, you, know, you can publish a Clamor and if you set up the title the way you want it, that'll actually be a pretty good tweet as well, um, right? So the, the title will show up in Twitter um, along with the linked clamor, and it'll have the image with it as well. Um, so you can kind of do double duty for some of your Twitter management by just sending a good clamor out that's got a well-thought-through title uh, where you know that's going to be what shows up on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see. Well, and just to wrap this up, uh, sure. you know, I, I'm sure, um, well, I'm, I'm not 100% sure, but I, I imagine that most of the people who are listening to us now, most probably are starting from scratch and have never used the app before, at least, you sure. know, that's what I th sure. I'm guessing. So uh, let's just say, um, what is the easiest way to start? Let's say they already have the idea about what topics they will be covering, because it will be related to their books topic, for example, sure. they will set up their own account, they have the app in their phone uh, what is the i mean what are the basic things where they could should start kind of looking at before they eventually start producing and becoming active on on the network sure um so a few moves here um obviously just download the app on ios device easy move um if you are android uh you can go to the publisher portal and at least use that. It's not all of the creation and social and um, customization features, but it has some of it. Um, and again, in a few weeks, we'll be putting the full version out. We actually, for, for, for really thinking about how to get started, we actually have a YouTube channel that has very detailed videos. It has a 45-minute Clamor Skills 101 workshop. Mm -hmm. And we would strongly recommend that. Um, you just search YouTube for Clamor, it will show up and, um, and go to the 45 minute skills 101 workshop. And that goes through every single aspect of Clamor, um, including the publisher portal. And in the notes to that video under the show more section, we actually uh, created, um, time stamped contents with hyperlinks. Mm -hmm. So you can see every topic that's covered along with the timestamp and press it and jump to that point in the video. So it can be a resource that you can keep coming back to uh -huh. to refresh yourself on how to use different aspects of Clamor. We have a whole section, section three in there, on really how to use Clamor as a social promotion tool. Um, so that's something I would definitely recommend people invest the time to check out. And then we have some update videos that are more like five minutes for version 117 and version 119 where we just share some of the newer features really around creation that have come out since we made that 45 minute workshop. Um, so that, that'd be, that'd be the go-to place that I would really recommend. Um, we've had some folks who've started to create their own training videos for Clamor, um, which we've been very supportive of. Um, so we, we, we do sort of uh, the folks over at Snack Size Marketing, they've created um, a series of videos on using Clamor and that whole business and that company is about Snack Size Marketing. So they saw Clamor and they said, gee, this would be a perfect fit. Um, uh, Teacher Cast, which is the, Jeff who's putting together, a, trying to put together a channel for teachers. He's also starting to create some training videos. So we have third parties as well who've just seen Clamor gotten excited and decided they want to position themselves as folks who can guide others on using Clamor. Um, so check those folks out. And the last thing I would say, uh, so, you know, we talked about just download the Clamor uh, app 
Second, check out our YouTube video series for sure on Mm -hmm. our YouTube channel. Third, check out some of the folks who are starting to put together some interesting training content. Um, And it's Tanya over at um, at Snack Size Marketing, who's the person there. And then um, last one is we've had something really cool happen, which is uh, Dave Jackson from the School of Podcasting. And Dave's Mm -hmm. a well-known guy in, in the podcasting community. He actually has created something called the Clamorcast, which is a weekly countdown of the top 20 clamors. It's a podcast where he just plays the top 20 clamors and then he comments on them. Uh Um, And that, first of all, it's really fun to listen to because Dave is just a funny guy and some of the clamors are pretty interesting and funny. So his reactions are are really fun. And um, so definitely check that out. You get an idea of some of the interesting things people are putting up. And um, think about ways that you can try to get in the top 20. Uh, as, as somebody who's new to Clamor, that's a really nice way to get some recognition. Um, that Clamor cast is starting to get some really good recognition. Apple, in the second or third week that it was around, already put it among its new and noteworthy podcasts in, in its podcast app. And as you know, being yeah. promoted as a new and noteworthy for Clamor, for um, Apple is a big deal um, in terms of getting recognition. So his podcast is really getting a lot of traction. And what it is, is it's a top 20 countdown of the top 20 clamors of the week. Um, so definitely would suggest checking that out too. Okay, I see. Well, uh, thanks a lot for, you know, spending this time with us and explaining what it is exactly and how we can use it as authors. Now, when I'm like, you know, thinking back, I have no excuse not using it since it's already in my phone. <laughs> so I'll go through the tutorial videos and see how it goes. I'll, I'll listen to those top 20 clamors to see how others are doing and what, what they come up with. And, you know, I'll definitely be part of it. Cool. Well, we'll we're thrilled to have you in the community. Um, we're, we're very easy to contact. Um, you know, we're active on Twitter and our handle is at Clamor app. Um, the, there's a, in the app itself, if you hit the menu and settings, you go to support and that'll generate an email to support at clamor.com. That's not some, you know, uh, operator somewhere who's not really paying a lot of attention. That's us. That's me and the rest of the founding team. I will personally see that email. Um, if anybody sends us a support email, um, we care a lot when we hear from anybody who's using Clamor and has questions or has suggestions for us. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thank you very much. I wish you lots of success with what you've started. And uh, I hope it will become the second, I I mean, the upcoming big thing. (laughs) Thank you. It's been a pleasure chatting with you. Thanks. Well, I guess that was it. All the useful links that were mentioned by Parvis will be included in the show notes, so you can check them out at www.annialexander.com backward slash 108. As to me, I will do a small audio of 18 seconds to use on Clamor for this specific episode and see what happens. And meanwhile, once again, a reminder, let's celebrate Right to be Right podcast birthday together on live hangout and meet each other and uh, have fun. I'll talk to you about pretty much everything you'd like to know. I'll answer your questions. I'll have a guest over. We'll have a blast. So register to make sure you don't miss it that's at www.annialexander.com backward slash birthday i'll be waiting for you there i count on you please make sure you come please make sure you support me because i'm doing this for the first time and i'm really uh, excited scared worried all at the same time so take care keep writing meanwhile and i'll meet you in the next episode